Yes, we're here, and it is always great to be with you, our Yes audience. Ian Joy, Bob Lorenz with you. And you know what, Ian, just I want to start off in the interest of national sanity, because we're still all binge watching things and sharing content and things we like to watch. What are you teeing up these days? What are you watching? Oh, that's a big question right there. You know, Give me a couple. Give me a couple tasty nuggets. I've got a few. And that. And I've certainly enjoyed what's been put out there. I mean, I'm really impressed with what Netflix have done as well in particular. And of course, Amazon. I mean, I've really gone all different platforms here. I've signed up for everything. I mean, I'm giving my money to anyone who will take it so that I can watch as much as I possibly can. I try to limit my time as what I'm watching. So I leave it to like maybe one or two episodes a day. My wife will go through five or six episodes a day. Don't know how she does it with three kids. Wow. Um, but if I'm giving you two or three that I really like, First and foremost, I watch Entourage religiously. And of course, everyone's talking about the big one, the MJ, the last dance. I mean, every Sunday I've set my alarm. I've told my wife and children to stay out of my room so I can <laughs> sit and watch this. And it's been a phenomenal watch. A lot of things about Michael Jordan I did not know. But it was and still is one of the best sports documentaries I have ever watched. So it's been impressive. What about you, Bob? What have you been watching? Yeah, I want to ask you about MJ in a minute. But when you send him out of the room, is it like, but get me popcorn first. Bring dad some popcorn. You know, what's interesting is you, you talked about diving into some of those shows that had five or six seasons. I always find it hard to start a show like that because I know I'm going to have to make a long commitment. But we've done, uh, on Netflix, we did Dead to Me, which is the Christina Applegate show, which we've, and with Linda Cardellini, which found to be very good. We crushed that. Yeah. And uh, I just started one on Amazon, we're halfway through, called Upload. Yeah. And it's a futuristic look, is if you die, your body, can you save your consciousness? Well, they do in the future. They save the consciousness, and you can then interact with your life on earth, you're just not there. You're in this heavenly place, but you pay for it. Ironically, you talked about streaming services. You pay for it with like a, you have a Verizon bill. You know what I mean? So you have unlimited data that you can, I can call you anytime in from this heaven like state, or I might just have two gigs. So I live in this like, you know, other world where I run out of things to read and things to do and things to yeah. look at. So it sounds it's amazing. really, really interesting. But back to the last dance, you've got further than I have so far. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, it's just my opinion, but you tell me that one of the things you would love about it, because you were such a competitor and still are, is that you love how great his competitive nature was, maybe unparalleled in pro sports. Yeah, I think a lot of the generation that is watching this right now our generation of people that didn't see MJ when he was playing. And, and I'm including that. I didn't see the best of Michael Jordan. I caught the last games of his career, the comeback, so, so to say. But to witness what went on behind the scenes for Michael Jordan, for the Chicago Bulls, what went on in the front office, what they had to deal with, um, it was quite remarkable. And it was really eye-opening. But that professionalism, that aggression, I mean, that winning mentality that you have in a player that was just maybe born with you, I don't think a lot of people can actually learn that. I think you're actually, you have it or you don't have it. And he clearly had it. And he pushed his teammates to be better than they probably were. He pushed his team to be a great team as far as team spirit because he knew that without them, he couldn't win. So he needed his team to be a part of something special so that he could win medals, win trophies, and and he certainly did that. It's really impressive to me how he's always first in the class, right? You know, right. if he's doing a sprint, he's first. If he's lifting a weight, he's lifting heaviest. If he's jumping, he's jumping higher than anybody else. That's what impressed me most about it. What I find remarkable, too, and I don't know if some of our viewers had a chance to see the segment I did with my colleague Michael Ozanium from Forbes for Forbes Sports Money, that – uh, his Q score among young kids today, Jordans, who've never seen him play, or maybe just when they were born, yeah. so they still wouldn't remember watching him play, is through the roof. And that's because of his Air Jordans. Now, I get that. I get why it would be that way. But now, it seems to me, this documentary gives them a chance to connect all the dots as to why he became this great player that he was. And it also kicks up that current debate, because it's, it seems to be nonstop 
who was ever better, Jordan or LeBron? Well, they get to see LeBron play. Now they get a lot bigger chunk of how Jordan was. Yeah, I think your generation, you seem to follow the best player at that time. I mean, for, for me personally, LeBron is, is the best because of, I'm watching him from a kid all the way through the pros to winning these championships. Didn't get to see that with MJ. But now I'm watching this documentary. I realize he had a much more or a bigger impact on basketball and on sports and on a generation than anybody else in basketball or sports ever did. So it really was great to me to hear from not only Michael Jordan, but to hear from his agent, to hear from coaches, to hear from teammates, to hear from opponents, people who actually hated playing against Michael Jordan or playing with Michael Jordan, how frustrating he was. The agent was really impressive to me about the deal with Nike. You know, they hoped to sell maybe $3 million worth of shoes in the first year for a rookie. And then they ended up selling like $125 million dollars worth of shoes that was so impressive to me and of course watching the documentary my mind starts to go you know and I'm always thinking about entertainment you know what would people want to see and I thought well maybe my sport soccer if I'm turning to soccer who would it be there's a guy called Zlatan Ibrahimovic who I know would be amazing because his life has been incredible soccer life he's won pretty much everything his personal life is ridiculously crazy he's so famous he does stupid things on the field um, and again for me, it would be a documentary that would make people see probably a dark side to his life, how difficult it's been, but also love him more for the, what he did to push himself, to take himself to the next level. As far as the team is concerned, you could, you could choose 10 different teams in soccer. But if I'm thinking of team sports, yeah. I'm thinking of the Yankees. I would oh, love yeah. to see a documentary about the Yankees. But what sort of era would we do if we were doing one in the Yankees, Bob? I mean, you've yeah. lived and yeah. grown up with baseball. You could pick, I mean, last 100, 120 years, all those championship runs with Yogi Bear on the team and the Lou Gehrig. Yeah, you could pick. Listen, that's why we have Yankees classics. That's why we have Yankeeographies on Yes. Yeah. I know something that is in the works at Yes, and Jack Curry, our colleague, has done a ton of interviews from the dynasty years and that 96 team, is we're putting together a dynasty show. Yeah. So for any Yes viewers, keep your eyes out for that. I think that's going to be terrific because – the beauty of it is, it's not all about just, as you said, the players and what we can pull up clips of, of highlights of games. I think with Jordan, and as you talked about with Ibrahimovic, how about, we, we know if, if you're painting by numbers, you don't just paint in the ones and twos. You're painting in all, all that background stuff. And you yeah. realize the depth of either the player or, for example, those 90s teams for the Yankees, the depth of those teams. Am I right in saying, when we're talking about the New York Yankees, Bob, that there has been generations come and gone? If you're looking at a Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan came, raised the level of the Chicago Bulls, he left, and then the Chicago Bulls sort of faded out of the limelight. But the New York Yankees are always number one. No matter who comes in and out of the franchise, the club is still number one. Am I right in saying that? No, you're absolutely right. I mean, they are the biggest global brand. Their value reflects that. Everything about them over the years reflects that. But I want to draw a parallel. And, of course, they are in business together, so to speak, well, in a variety of ways. The Jordan brand, worn by Derek Jeter. Now, you could say that Michael Jordan, of course, was the driving force behind those teams, and he could take over games for the Bulls. Mm -hmm. But you can't have a championship team with just Derek Jeter. You can't with just Jordan. And that's why this documentary has made us think about Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, Bill Limbeer, all of these players, John Paxson. So, so you look beyond just the greatness of a Jeter as he started that dynasty. I mean, he was young then, yeah. and it was a lot of those other superstar players willing to be background players to make a great team even greater. I want to learn from our supporters as well, the viewers, the fans who are following the Yankees, who, are, who have followed through generations, grandfathers, fathers, sons yeah. and daughters now who are watching. You know, what era would they like to see a documentary on? Which players would they like to see a documentary on who have come and gone from the Yankees? I mean, there are so many players to choose from, so many different generations, as you say. Yeah. I'm still learning a lot about New York Yankees. And of course, you know, having worked in New York now for about five or six years, everybody talks about the New York Yankees. So I think it would be a great watch. And everybody knows a ton about the Yankees. And if you're right, that connection from dads and moms to kids and daughters to, to grandparents, they all know about the Yankees. And the Yankees fans are well-educated and they love a winner. So keep your eyes out for that show coming up on Yes, Ian and I. We'll see you next time on Yes, We're Here.